Hey there, gorgeous. Hope you're having a great day. So nice to see you again. This is one of the most challenging videos I've put together in a little while. And I know some people may look at this and think, oh my gosh, it's so superficial. Really? <laughs> no, but seriously, when this is your job, it's hard to narrow things down. So this video really is all about picking just one makeup product from each category. What would be the ones that I would choose to save from the high-end side and the drugstore side if I were getting rid of everything. And so that's why I say this This was like, yeah, if, you, if you're a makeup lover, you get how nerve-wracking this video was to put together. <laughs> we'll start talking about primers. For the eyes, the eyeshadow primer that I would choose bar none from the drugstore would be the Milani one. Many of you know that about me by now. High-end side, I started recently using the Anastasia eyeshadow primer, got a little sample of it. Really, really been loving it. So that would be one that I would spend money on if I were spending money. But to be honest with you, I prefer using a drugstore eyeshadow primer since I use it up so fast and so often. For the face, on the high-end side, I really love this Paula's Choice Shine Stopper. It's something that you apply over the top of your makeup after you've already applied it, and it does an amazing job of keeping everything intact, and you don't have to worry about babysitting your makeup at all. So if you're looking for a new primer to try, that is one of my go-tos, especially for special events. Now, when it comes to the drugstore side, I really love the Milani No Pore Zone Mattifying Primer. What I love so much about this one is not and we're back. Sorry about that. My SD card got filled up, so I had to go and change it out. Anyway, like I was saying, what I love about the No Pore Zone Mattifying Primer is not only does it extend the wear time of makeup, but it fills in everything and it blurs your complexion. It makes your skin look, ab look absolutely beautiful at a very affordable price. So if you've been looking for something like that, you would love it. For the eyes, this was the hardest hardest choice out of everything because you know how much I love my eyeshadow and it would be really hard for me to have only two eyeshadow palettes. I mean, it really, really would. I could do it, but I gotta have options. I gotta have some color and I didn't want to give you my traditional favorites. I mean, traditionally I would say, oh yes, I'm going to keep the Viseart Neutral Matte Palette. You already know that. You've seen that so many times and I would tell you the same Wet n Wild Petalette Palette too, but I'm going to give you two new ones that I would be absolutely happy with if I only had just these two palettes. So the first one from the high-end side would be the Illamasqua palette. I don't know what the name of this, okay, it's Elemental Artistry palette. I love this because it's got the perfect range of neutrals. It's got a purple in there, a gray. I feel like I could create so many looks with this palette. It's all matte, which I really love that too. Uh, to me, it would be a great everyday palette and also something that I could change up from time to time too. To throw some color in from the drugstore side, I personally love this palette from Hard Candy and this is their Smoke Out palette and it's all greens, which I love. And I could very easily mix this palette in with the Illamasqua palette and create so many looks with those two combined too. Would I want to add in a purple palette? Probably. And if I were going to add in a purple palette, because I feel like that's the only thing missing, this is the one that I would add in. And it's right here, the Viseart palette. That's actually what I'm wearing on my eyes today. If you would like to see a tutorial on this look, let me know. I'm thinking about, I maybe do an Instagram reel on it. So it's just like a little quick tutorial I'll post on my Instagram page. But this palette from Viseart is such a great little purple palette. This is their Violet on Tondu, I think something like that, but yes, it's, it's great. Hard Candy also makes a really great purple palette. That was another one that I was considering throwing into the mix here, but yeah, I couldn't pick just one eyeshadow palette from each category. I probably would have these three and I'd be really happy with that. For the brows, okay. This was pretty easy for me. On the drugstore side, I would love the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer. The shade that I've been using is Auburn. Great pencil all the way around. Great color match. Easy to blend, easy to work with. The one that I've really been loving lately that I rediscovered recently is from Urban Decay, and that's the Brow Blade one. This is the one that has that 
pen on one side and then the pencil on the other side and it looks amazing in the brows and I know several people have told me your brows haven't looked that good since I've been watching you and I've been watching you for like eight years and I'm like ooh. <laughs> but thank you thank you for the compliment I really really love this product too and that would probably be the one that I would stick with it's been one that I've been loving lately mascara okay on the drugstore side I love the Revlon volume amazing waterproof mascara this has been my go-to recently i also would not be opposed to the l'oreal lash paradise or which other one the essence lash princess their waterproof formula in this one and i'm given different options with for that because i mean mascara isn't something that you're going to have for a while i mean you change it every three months approximately so you'd constantly be trying new ones you know more than likely but those would be the three that I would probably go between. Oh, and the Elf Big Mood. That's another one of my favorites too, this one. This video is only supposed to be one product from each category. See, problems, issues. I got more issues than Vogue. But that's not why we're here. <laughs> On the high-end side, I really, really love the Charlotte Tilbury Full Fat Lashes Mascara. This is a little sample that I have been using. I've gone back and bought more samples. But I'm a little afraid to buy the full size because I have bought the full size before and been really disappointed. But then I go back to the sample and I love it. So I just use the samples for right now. In terms of eyeliner, if I were going to go with drugstore eyeliners, and we're talking about pencil eyeliners, I would choose the ones from Rimmel Scandalize line. Those have never disappointed me. I have loved every one I've tried. They last all day. They're excellent. On the high end side, the Bare Minerals ones have been my go-to recently. And this is their, in particular, the Topaz shade, which is a dark brown, has been my favorite. These are soft and they can break if you tend to push them up a little too high. But if you're careful on how much is pushed up, they're not gonna break on you that easily, but they're very creamy, very soft. They last all day. They do not budge. And they are some of my favorites. Liquid eyeliner. I don't have one on the high end side that I like. I just, and I can't justify an expense of that amount on the high end side either, especially for a liquid eyeliner with how often you throw it out and you use it, etc. So I set out to find one from the drugstore and the one from Jason Wu, and that is the classic liquid eyeliner. This has become my go-to and I love it because it's matte, it's black, it's not runny, it doesn't smudge, it doesn't smear, it stays all day and you're looking for a new liquid liner you would love it we have the eyes covered and i don't need to tell you that when it comes to false eyelashes that i would wear my own <laughs> from my own lash line i think if i were going to choose just one style from my lash line to wear it would be authentic because that is the most natural looking lash it has a clear band and it looks absolutely amazing on the eyes so that would probably be my go-to false eyelashes for the face Concealer wise, I love the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. This is actually one of my best videos on this channel, believe it or not, was when I reviewed this product. I think that video has, gosh, it's over a million views now, if not almost, it could be two million. I don't know, I haven't looked at it in a while, but still one of my favorite concealers of all time. And then on the high end side, the one that I've been using the most frequently that I probably would not be able to let go of is the Hourglass creme vanish concealer amazing amazing coverage i absolutely love it for the face bare minerals complexion rescue is my go-to because it's a very light tinted moisturizer kind of consistency and it does a beautiful job of covering minor imperfections that's what i'm wearing today i wear it a lot and on the drugstore side its actual dupe counterpart is from ColourPop, and that's the pretty fresh tinted moisturizer those two are almost identical to one another and they perform the same exact way lasts all day looks beautiful on the skin an absolute go-to that i would be really happy with using just that for the rest of my life if i had to providing they still make it of course now for powder on the high-end side i really 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 love the fenty beauty filterized filter it's not filterized it's pro filter <laughs> powder the one that i use is in the shade butter and what i love about this is it does give you that filterized look and it blurs the skin in a very beautiful way on the drugstore side i really just could not be without my cody airspun translucent powder this is one i've been using since i was a teenager old favorite i love it 
And so, yeah, that's the end of that story. When we come, when we talk about blush here, the CoverGirl Instant Cheekbones palette in Refined Rose is my go-to. That's the one that I use all the time and absolutely love it. And on the high-end side, the Jue Blush Duo. And what is the shade with this one? Uh, this is the Rose Gold palette. They have two shades in this palette. I jammed my finger in one of them, but still workable and great shades, very neutral, work with a variety of different looks. And that's why I love that one. In terms of contour and highlight, I would more than likely be glued to the Maybelline City Bronzer because it's such a cool toned neutral shade and it's great quality, great pigment, won't fade on you, looks fantastic. And from ColourPop, I love their Super Shock Cheek products. And this is one of their highlighters in the shade Wisp. Oh, if you're looking for a highlighter that is of amazing quality, I don't know if that just it, that doesn't really do it justice, but wow, it's yeah, it's one of the best drugstore highlighters I have. I absolutely love it. On the high-end side, I don't really care for Charlotte Tilbury products that much. There's not a lot that I really like from her line, but this is one of the products that I swoon over and I'm still using it and I still love it. That is the Filmstar Bronze and Glow Face Sculpt palette. So there's a contour on one side and then a highlight on the other side. And I still use this quite often and yeah, it's a good one. Now, one of my favorite lipsticks on the drugstore side is from Ulta Beauty, and that's their Velvet Matte Lip Crayon in the shade Rose Quartz. That is what I'm wearing on my lips today, if you've been curious about what this shade is. And it, you can see that it's a great nude shade that works with so many different eye looks, and that's why it would probably be one of my go-to lipsticks that I would keep. On the high-end side, I actually have three. <laughs> could not choose between all three of these, but I think if I were going to have to choose, I would go with Max Cream Cup because it's one of the most perfect pinks for my complexion. It's probably, I would say like a medium pink on me. And again, it's one of those that is universally flattering with so many different eye looks and it can transition from day to night. And that's why I love that shade. Now, if you're curious about what the other two shades were that I had picked out, the Clinique Beige Pop is another one that is again, it's like cream cup. So that's why I chose the cream cup over it is it's a little bit lighter by comparison, but it's still one of those great pinky nudes. Obviously I don't need two of those. So that's why I would choose the cream cup shade. And then the third one that I, I chose that I was considering was the Chanel lipstick in the shade boy. This is such a beautiful shade of pink. It's one that I actually bought for my mom because she saw me wearing it. And she says, I love that color. And it's really beautiful on fair skin tones and it's very creamy and moisturizing. I absolutely love that lipstick. So I probably would have all three to be honest with you, but if you told me to pick just one, it would be Max Cream Cup. For setting spray, I would choose the Rimmel Stay Matte Fix and Go. This has been my go-to favorite for the past, I don't know, like year, maybe two years. It's, I love this stuff. And on the high-end side, it's not really high-end, but it's a little more expensive in terms of drugstore pricing, is the model in a bottle setting spray. This stuff stinks to high heaven, but I'm telling you what, it's like hairspray for your face. Nothing moves when you use this. So it's one of those that when I spray it, I'm like, <gasps> I hold my breath and I go quickly to another room until I can't smell it anymore. I mean, you can't smell it after you apply it, but it's really perfumed. So that's the only downside to it, but it does do a really beautiful job on setting the face. I think that was everything. But that's plenty. <laughs> Let me know what some of your go-to must-have could never be without. If you only had to have one makeup products would be. I would love to hear your top choices also. Thank you so much for being here, for taking the time to watch, and I look forward to seeing you next time in another video.